The Halo Show season finale just dropped this past week, and I have some concerning feelings about it. With no new news on whether Paramount will actually greenlit a third season for The Halo Show, many fans are unsure about the future of the series. I'm not sure if you knew, but me and the crew have reviewed every episode of The Halo Show for the last two seasons, and it definitely has gone through some ups and downs. And with the lack of news whether season three will actually be greenlit by Paramount, I think this is a good time to sit down and have a talk with both the Halo community and the fans of the show and discuss whether this show deserves getting a third season. If you've been watching my other videos, I've had some clear opinions about what I felt about some of the plot points of the show, but this is more of an analysis of the show as a whole and where it went right and where it fell completely on its face. And by the end, my hope is that you'll understand why or why not this show deserves a third season. Does Master Cheeks redeem himself from season one? Has season two proven to actually write decent characters? Let's forget to wear our armor, avoid getting glassed by the Covenant, and jump right into this. For those of you that don't know, the conception of the Halo show has actually been in the works since 2014. Halo has always been a cultural phenomenon, so many gamers always wondered, how has there not been an adaptation of the famous series for the past 20 years? Technically speaking, Microsoft has been trying to get this project off the ground as far back as 2006, with A-listers like Peter Jackson, Guillermo del Torno, and Neil Bloomkamp. When they finally landed a suitor in Showtime in 2014, it seemed like it was going to be a dream come true. Right. Even though there was funding, a platform to release on, there was no vision. At first, it was going to closely resemble the original games, but according to Kiki Wolfkill, the funding would have been too difficult to obtain that could mirror the scale of the original titles. So roughly for five years, they were pondering on how they could recreate their own vision of the series, basically in a world of purgatory. And by 2020, they had somewhat of an image. Then COVID hit. Yay! And everything went more downhill. Only until 2021 did we get any news on the actual project, and when it finally released in March 24th of 2022, boy, it was met with some criticism. I can see how our faith has been rewarded. The Halo series is going to be separate from the original Halo story and create a variant known as the Silver Timeline, where some characters may have the same qualities, but the plot events may be changed or altered along the way. And to be clear, I'm going to reference some plot spoilers, so be aware before I jump in. Now, season one roughly hit around a six and a half by most critics, and fans definitely were way more angry with the overall season, most times dropping the score down to four or five out of 10. Chief barely wore his helmet, he had sex with a Covenant spy, we had some bad side stories, I mean, it got pretty rough. So when season two came rolling around, people were cautious on how it would be overall. Most people will say that season two landed better than season one, but there was definitely some positives and negatives that make me wonder, does it really deserve a season three? So to really understand the show as a whole, we need to first think about where they went right. I think one of the most important aspects of any game adaptation is the keeping consistent with the universe or the atmosphere of the story being told. Now, when we think about Halo, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously the Halo ring. That aspect alone, Paramount did a solid job of the universe. The Halo ring was shown a little bit in season one, but when they get to the ring in season two, it honestly looks exactly the way we want it. The greenery, the scale, the mystique. I mean, damn, that's that's pretty good. The green screen really was put through the ringer and it still did a solid job. But not just the Halo ring, every colony we visit, whether it's Onyx based, Reach itself, all look great for what they were. I mean, they did look into some various areas from either the games or the books and said, we need to match that level and I need to give them some respect for actually doing that well. Most game adaptations I've watched or covered on this channel always seem to find a way to screw up the universe of the games and usually the better adaptations emphasize that point to the fans of the games that they can recognize the world that they're watching. I still have nightmares from the original Mario movie and Bowser being a business tycoon. Oh, the, the good old days. Now to build on that, the design of the characters and what they were in this universe is pretty spot on. I gotta say there is no level of cosplayer that could reach how realistic the Spartan armor we saw for Chief and Silver Team was. And I'm sorry guys, but I don't know if you can match this stuff. But this armor looked pretty crisp. My only wish is they actually wore it. But yeah, it was still good even used as a decoration. The Marines, Admiral Keys, Halsey seem almost like carbon copies from the games. And I think they did a solid job bringing them from the lore and putting it in the show itself. Hell, even the Covenant. As much over the last 20 years, we've seen so many different iterations of the Elites, Jackals, and Grunts 
they relatively look okay. I'd probably give the Elites a edge over the Halo 4 and Halo 5's version of the Elites. I mean, those things are a straight up abomination. From Bungie's Covenant to 3 for 3's, it was a gross transition. Now, even the show had their own gross variants of the Covenant. I mean, the Jackals looked like crap. That is one big pile of shit. But relatively, they did a solid job. It's important to try to continue the overall feel of the games into these shows because you want your characters to be recognizable to the fans of the original content. As much as you're trying to bring new fans in, if you can get the original fans to the franchise on board, then that will go a long way. Now, for the most part, there are a lot of people that have debated the overall characters of the show. And even myself, I have some criticism for certain characters that I definitely will be discussing later in the video. But I have to say, some of the side characters do shine in this season. I always felt like Cortana was the best written character of the show, with her dialogue being very close to the original games and always having a sly remark ready to one-up somebody that she's talking to. But she's calculated. There's a sense that she's always one step ahead of someone else, even when they think that she's not. Ackerson is probably the best new character of the show, not only drawing heavily from the original lore of the franchise, being a rival of Dr. Halsey and an orchestrator of the Spartan 3 program, but also having good reasons for what his actions are, to an extent. I'll be honest with you, the beginning he had such a great story arc that was developing around him, then it sort of collapsed and made zero sense by the time the season ends. But the backstory of his family and his sister being a Spartan too, which led to causing resentment towards Halsey and the other Spartans, is absolutely butter for the eyes. Even though the Spartan 2s in Vanek, Riz, and Kai had all good character writing in how they interacted with each other and how they were actually acting like Spartans, versus some other people I don't want to currently mention. Jacob Keys, Halsey, I mean the side characters are pretty solid this season, compared to season one. Hell, even the Arbiter, even if some of the plots started to get stale, was written pretty well and his interactions with other major characters were actually enjoyable to watch. He also became my favorite character. My only wish is that they discuss more about his backstory. I never felt any of these characters were poorly done and they fit in the atmosphere and universe of Halo. I could see Paramount's Halsey interjected into the Halo game. It makes sense. It works well. And giving fans the feelings of paying homage to the characters we love from the games only makes sense since most people watching the show are fans of the franchise. Now, even though season two was better than season one, there were some horrible aspects of the season that drove me absolutely insane while watching. I want to first talk about the plot. Now, I want to give everyone a heads up because I will discuss some spoilers of the show, so be aware. Now, there are some major dumb decisions made throughout the plot of the show that really stuck with me and made me go through the five stages of grief while watching. There were times where writers were either trying to force certain actions to happen solely based on uncharacteristic decisions or desired not to explain how certain events occur and just throw it up to sci-fi magic. I'll give you an example. By the end of season one, Maki, which was the Covenant spy the chief laid the pipe to in the prison hold, which is a federal crime by the way, had been shot by Kai and trying to stop her from using the artifact, giving the Covenant access to the ring. So when the final scene ends and John gives his body up to Cortana to become the Master Chief like they just did a fusion dance from DBZ, we all thought that Maki is dead and that that would carry with John, making him more into a stone-faced soldier going forward. Well, guess what? The writer said, go F yourself, let's suspend reality, and she's alive. What? Oh, okay, all right. So let's just say, that she's alive now and supposedly she doesn't have her power. Do you think that it may be beneficial to explain any of that stuff that just happened? No, apparently not. Apparently, not only is Maki godly and won't die, but regains her powers randomly when John touches the artifact the same time she does. How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. The problem with doing something like this is that it takes away any sense of the word reality or better yet, an aspect of basic common sense. It makes the viewer sort of confused on why these events are happening, and it sort of kills any sort of cohesive story that may be consistent. It sort of reminds me of the new generation of Star Wars films that change directors each movie, where you have J.J. Abrams pointing the story in one direction, and then Rian Johnson decapitates all the story elements that he was building, then goes back to J.J. Abrams trying to salvage the mangled corpse of the story, and he's trying to rebuild it from scratch. And to skate by on some of the story elements that normally wouldn't make sense, the director just says, no idiot, this happened, get over it. This is only seen more with the whole Quan arc of the show. From season one being a straight up annoying ass kid 
to becoming the protector of the Halo Ring portal by the end of the season, to all of a sudden given the role where she can now see visions of her ancestors warning her about the Flood, and even having the ability to open up secret doors that were made by Forerunners? I mean, it, what type of bizarro story are we talking about here? I mean, I want to be the tip of the Fedora Halo fan, but even if Quan is related to ancient humans that were around when the Forerunners were alive, how the hell does she have the know-how of opening up Forerunner doors and portals when legit scientists that centered their whole career, their jobs around Forerunner tech, were straight up brain dead in doing this? Why? Because fuck them, that's why. The fact is, when watching this show, you have to turn off your brain at times just to look past some of these aspects because if you try to think logically about some of these scenes, your brain will just fry. One of the biggest issues I saw with the show was straight up character assassination. And that assassination was with the Master Chief. I know online there have been some people that have loved how Pablo Shriver has played the Master Chief, but I feel like between him and the really horrible writing of the character, I'm not a fan. I'm looking at the show as a whole. He is nothing like the original character from the games. One thing that grinds my ass the most about game adaptations as a whole is the whole concept of, well, we need to write this character not as a video game character, but as a person, and then proceed to change the character to a level that they're unrecognizable. Paramount's John Halo is not close to the depiction of the original character, and it's mainly for several reasons. The first has to be with his over-the-top emotional state, which was always debated due to the showing of his face. Now, personally, I knew we would see his face, which isn't a big deal, but it was more about the, we need to show him as a human. I can go all day and discuss how the games did this a hundred times better, but I'll focus on the armor debate. The biggest excuse I heard about the Master Chief not wearing armor in season one was that we need to show him as a person rather than a machine. So let's just show him naked and that will definitely get me on board. <sighs> well, okay, if that's the argument, then how did the Mandalorian do it for several seasons? How did Deadpool or Darth Vader show their emotion while hiding behind a mask? Well, there's one thing I can tell you they didn't do and they didn't have Darth Vader get naked and have sex with rebels to show his emotion. Because what they did instead was they wrote lines to convey their emotions, or better yet, have some head tilts to show the focus or seriousness of these conversations. I mean, this isn't something new. They've been doing this for almost all of the DC and Marvel universe that wear masks all the freaking time. Secondly, as a character, Paramount changed his priority to being more about being a human than actually protecting humanity. Master's focus in the games was simple. He's a soldier. His goal is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. His friends around him dying, yes, that, that impacts him as a human. But in the end, his goal is still the same. Throughout this show, he has constantly changed. His priority ranged from completing his mission, to wanting to get some ass, to getting revenge. It never made sense. And what makes matters worse, the connection between him and the Spartans is all over the place. He treated members of Silver Team more like subordinates rather than siblings. I mean, even 3 for 3 told a better story of the Spartan 2s, and that's saying something. You would think that fighting alongside each other for decades and growing up together would make them like family, right? Well, according to Paramount, that honestly means nothing. I felt like I was watching an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia with how little these people liked each other. I mean, I'm not looking for them to sit around the TV, eating dinner, talking about their day, but for God's sakes, they honestly felt like they were just annoyed or hated each other most of the time. And even just looking at Master Chief's main priority as a person, it was all about finding his place in this world, even though the Covenant has been blasting and invading all these planets and colonies. I mean, that's what I would do in that situation. I mean, I would, I would see all my friends getting killed, so I might just go visit some churches, go see some AI prostitutes to talk about my feelings. I mean, that just makes perfect sense. I mean, I'm not bullshitting you. That's what actually happens in the show. The issue to me is that when you create a new story, one of the most important aspects that should be prioritized is keeping the characters of that story consistent. I felt like this story would have fit better if Shepard from Mass Effect was the main character rather than the Master Chief. And lastly, one of the issues that really hurt this season was the lack of emphasis on the fall of Reach. I mean, I don't know about you, but every trailer we saw, the cover art, discussions about the season, we're all saying the fall of Reach. Do you know how many episodes of this season were dedicated to the actual fall of the planet? 1.25 episodes, or roughly 80 minutes total over eight episodes was dedicated to the fall of Reach. Oh, that's real nice. And we didn't even get to see Spartans in their armor fighting on Reach. 
much. And I know I'm going to get people out there telling me, well, you know, Mars Man, in the books, only seven chapters actually focus on the destruction of Reach. You know what? Yeah, you're right. Even that being the case, is it the goal just to speed run through the fall of Reach like it's nothing? It's honestly one of the most important points of the entire franchise, and your goal is to emphasize more of it rather than just move on to get onto some other story. And I think what makes matters worse is that if this show is packed with great storylines that took our attention away from Reach, then it would make sense. But literally everything we focus on is just a bore. They speed through every storyline and never once feels like it lets anything breathe. Like if they gave more time to Reach or even the Arbiter arc, then I can guarantee you it would have landed more. People would love it. But instead we get Kessler's missing at the supermarket story, Juan's hanging out with the shaman lady story. I mean, they should have just focused on one storyline and all the characters involved and just let it flesh out the entire season. Less is better. And since they're trying to be like the Game of Thrones, they found out something really essential to that show's success. It's more about the characters giving their time to let a story flow rather than speed through many stories thinking that it makes the show seem interesting. And you need to also have a group of talented writers to pull off a show organized in that way. And we've seen these writers are not those people. So when it comes to whether Halo's show deserves a season three, I always felt like it needs to hit three criteria to meet that standard. Does it convey the world of Halo well enough to keep the attention of the old fans while bringing in a new audience? Does it bring excitement to head into the third season, bringing a large audience itching for the next season to arrive? And is it profitable for Paramount to feel like their budget will not be wasted? When it comes to the world of Halo, they do convey some of the atmosphere of the franchise well that we can see from the Halo ring and the UNSC, and it all looks great. But the characters are sort of all over the place, whether they don't really make sense of what they're doing. They don't really connect to the original intention of what the characters were written for. And sure, it looks like a Halo world, but it doesn't feel like a good Halo story. If I was someone new to the world of Halo, I would just be confused. There are so many aspects that are never dove into. What about the Spartan program? The Covenant? Hell, even the Forerunner. I mean, when you create new story elements just to show, hey, look, you have some things on the games, but then you have to look past all the other crap to make sense. It, it just doesn't intrigue me. Does this show bring excitement enough to want a third season? Well, I've been going through the five stages of grief, and I'm finally at acceptance, where I know that this show will never be what I wanted originally. It sort of is taking on a what-if variation of the Halo franchise, but instead of explaining events in a more cohesive way, we're blowing past basic storytelling aspects and the fears are going over budget. So honestly, I'm not really excited for a season three because if they continue along this path, not only will this not be consistent with the story I grew up playing, but they won't give these storylines much breathing room and I feel like it'll just fail in the long run. And is this profitable? Well, for Paramount is considered one of the best shows currently, but when you look at most critics ranking the top shows available on Paramount Plus, Halo is sitting at a number 16 out of 25. When it was teased as their next premiere show going forward, it's not really hitting that. So even the studio heads realize that this isn't going as well as they intended. And what makes matters worse, the longer the show goes on, the more money they will need to be used to try to fill out all the special effects. And I really don't think Paramount will be willing to put out the cash to make season three good. I honestly believe the show should just ride off into the sunset and let another studio make a Halo project. I can respect writers wanting to make their own vision of a story, but it's starting to feel like producers of the show want to create a sci-fi story with the name Halo attached to it, rather than actually make a project that depicts a story of the games. Because if they truly wanted to, they would have at least used the games as a base of what they're trying to build, and clearly they did. But what do you think about the Halo TV show? Do you think it deserves a season three? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. We have memberships on, make sure you join up to support the channel as well. Till next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.